Yeah. I love this. <laughs> Doesn't that just want to make you want to take a deep breath? Just like, yeah. oh, yes. Just let it out. I love that. That is so fun. I need to get that on my We can arrange that. Phone. Every day morning when I walk in the office, if that just played, it would be so fantastic. <laughs> An automatic cue. What's on your mind, coach? I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about President Nelson, his great talk from I think a year ago now, a year and a half ago, about gratitude. Um, we started something that I love so much on our team. So every two or three days we'll finish practice with a gratitude circle. Oh where we all put our arms around each other in a big circle and have the whole entire, everybody, managers, support staff, every player, coaches, and we will, someone will kick it off and then we play tag for five or six people just talking about what we're grateful for. And I think it's magic. I actually think it is the best thing going. Um, and this statement has been repeated oft but um, that you cannot be more happy than you are grateful. Mm. I think it's brilliant. And I think our guys are feeling a ton of gratitude right now and in honor of Thanksgiving um, and our team. I'd like for us to just make a big circle right now and say what we're thankful for. I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> but Everybody Leanne, gather Leanne, around. Leanne actually wanted to stand up. And did you want to stand up and say what you were grateful for? No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I am grateful for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put your wife on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Jay? Oh. No. And okay. okay, you anyway, tried. I love it. I mean, man, we have so much to be grateful for. It's just, it's incredible. And if we spend more time in a, in a, in a grateful spot um, with all the chaos that is in the world every day, and certainly in the dynamic nature of sports, it sure is yes. good for your soul. Well said. And frankly, uh, I was super grateful for... The fact that after the chaos of Thanksgiving in my house with 20 plus individuals, that it quieted down a little bit yes. and I could settle in to watch some BYU basketball yes. at 10 p.m. Mountain Time and just what a great way to end Thanksgiving. Day. No, I, I kid you not. Like, I, I, I think for Cougar Nation, so fun to have all the food and all the chaos and all the energy and then just have, you could just stop. Nobody has to talk to each other. You've already done that for the last six hours, right? And you just lay on the couch and kind of go in and out of like a, uh, you know, carb coma. Yes. And watch the game. We should do this every single year. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. All right, mark it down. And then the same thing on Black Friday. You go out, fight in the lines, go do your Christmas shop and come home. Kick off your shoes, turn on the fire, watch the Cougs win a game. I love it. Part of one of the most epic Fridays in yeah. recent memory of BYU yeah. sports with yes. the women's soccer yeah, team gosh. pulling off that remarkable what? comeback. And then a little bit later, BYU wins the Vegas yeah. showdown. So great. So, again, those are what are on my mind. In fact, let's take a specific look back on the last two victories and tonight's highlights and stats proudly presented by Intermountain Health. That was start an amazing transition. Thank Did you. you see how, like... <laughs> A pro. I just want to come back at some point. That's incredible. Okay, coach. Uh, let's start with Noah Waterman's made three-point jumper, yeah. and he's done that a lot. Incredible surge yeah. from him. Coach, what, what's been the difference for Noah in the three-point shooting? You know, season? coming into this game, Arizona State had been one of the top defensive teams in the country. They're really, really long. They're really, really active, and, and, and we were a little bit stuck in the first half. Fortunately, our defense was carrying the day, and then Noah broke it open. He had, a, he had a couple huge threes in the first half that were tough and contested. There's one of them. Kind of got us going, and um, then in the second half, kind of everybody jumped in. But he was he was unbelievable. He was great making shots. He was even better on the defensive end. He was so spectacular on the defensive end and on the glass all weekend. So physical. Yeah. Trevin Nell, you want to talk about a nice addition of sorts to the team this year? Yeah. In transition and right that's there. A, that's the second possession of the, of the, of the second half. And, and it was just like the guys came out firing, and um, it, it was actually really fun. I thought, I thought, um, you know, we handled the pressure way better in the second half. It kind of broke things open, and, and uh, the guys kept kept the pedal to the metal. Now, Arizona State opted to press for a lot of the second half, and it did not work out well for them yeah. because your three-point shooters were hitting in stride. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Arizona State is super aggressive on the front line of their press, uh, uncharacteristically so. And so they put so much pressure on the front end. If you, can, if you can somehow get past that front line, 
it's easy pickings from the three-point line. Most sure. teams don't actually like that shot in transition, um, but we love it. Uh, we would attack that way all day long and kind of live with the, the outcome, and the guy certainly did. I mean, you're watching highlights from the Friday night game against NC State. Slower start. You hadn't really been in this situation all season. Yeah. How were you able to overcome the slow start? Yeah, you see those scores, 18-7, 22-15, 32-24. Um, we were a little shaky. We were a little too – I felt like we respected their press a little bit too much. Um, I feel like our guys, you know, as, as the game wore on, the guys became more and more comfortable, and that's going to be a, a growing process for us um, in the backcourt, especially dealing with uh, pressure. But I thought, the, you know, we had nine turnovers in the first 11 minutes of the game, and we had none in the, in the next nine. Wild. And, um, and, and then we're really solid throughout the game, and, and um, it's just the guys growing and hanging in there and moving on to the next play. It was a huge shot by Spence. Oh, man. That was a huge shot by Spence. We were kind of stuck in the possession. He just said, I'll take this on myself. And how about this from Trey yeah. Stewart right here? You want to talk about huge shots. And we had been banging around three points, five points, one point, three points, one point, three points, and then Trey finally got that one in the corner to go down and transition, got us over the hump, and then the guys never looked back. What's gone into Trey Stewart's emergence and yeah. his confidence growing? It's been really, it's been really fun to watch, hasn't it? He he brings something really unique to our team on the court, in the locker room, in the community. Um, but it's been fun to watch his confidence grow as he's become more focused on doing the things that he does great. Because the things he does great are really special for us. They're really important. In fact, in this North Carolina State game, we were struggling against the press and subbed in Trey before the first media timeout, and he he really helped us get down and kind of get our mojo back. Certainly he brings an energy to the floor that is palpable. You out-rebound the Wolfpack by 11. This is a common theme yeah, for your team yeah. against whoever the opponent has been this season. Yeah, it's really important. That's kind of our tandem attack is, is we're going to play 27-50. Uh, we're going to use more of the floor than any team we face. That's our goal. And then we're going to, we're going to, our safety net is that we're going to just be voracious on the glass. We're going to the glass hard on every single possession. Hopefully we get a lot of four on twos and four on threes on the offensive glass and we can win those numbers games. You've probably already answered this in part, but what do you feel like was the best thing your team as a whole accomplished in the Vegas showdown experience? Yeah, I, I, the thing that I'm most excited about with our guys is just seeing that they can move on to the next play. Um, you know, Arizona State, we're, it was kind of stuck. It was kind of stuck. I think it was 12 to 9 forever. It seemed like 12 to 7, 12 to 9. We weren't scoring great in the first half. And the guys just kept moving on to the next play. Didn't carry any frustration or baggage from one play to the next. And then certainly in the beginning of North Carolina State, uh, things looked shaky. A lot of Cougar fans turned off their TV after nine minutes. We're like, I'm not watching this anymore. <laughs> um, but our guys didn't. Our guys kept fighting and, and just kept moving on. Like they kept moving on to the next play. And, with what we're going to face this year, that is going to be vitally important for us to be able to just quickly move on to the next play, move on to the next game, and, and keep our confidence and keep fighting. A 6-0 and start for BYU into the top 20, number 19 right now in the Associated Press poll, and we're not even to December. Pretty wild, fast start for BYU. And frankly, you've done it without some guys that you expect to play yeah. key roles. Yeah. Uh, there have been injuries, and, and I know everyone's wondering, okay, what's the status with Fus Traore, yeah. and, and when's he going to get back? So let, let's start there. You're winning games, testing your depth early. Yeah. What's Foose's trajectory of getting back in the lineup? Yeah, Foose has got a hamstring right now that is going to – we're just – it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing. Um, we're treating him like crazy. Um, he's got some special medical attention on it, and we're hoping to get him back as soon as possible. But, you know, hamstrings and groins, they're just, they're just, um, they kind of do what they do. And so um, we're hoping to get him back soon, but we'll just kind of see. Ali Khalifa, I, I can't get over, like, the role he plays in Las Ali? Vegas. You guys love Ali? <laughs> he hasn't practiced in a few weeks, and it's like, hey, we need you, big guy. And he goes in, he's dropping dimes. The guys couldn't say enough nice yeah. things about him, but... What an impact he made in an unexpected role. Yeah, we, we you know, we, we, we had not planned to use him over the weekend um, because he's, we're trying to be really conservative in bringing him back. And, and right now, uh, through some testing, uh, he's got some really Im imbalanced leg strength, right to left leg. And, and he's, he's had a chronic knee issue that we're trying to get him past so that it never becomes an issue again. But we had to throw him into into service uh, last second. I mean, really, genuinely, um, knowing that Atiku was out, we were thinking maybe we'd play him five or 10 minutes and, and, and get Foos 30. And then five minutes of the game, uh, Foos decided that he was gonna take a vacation. <laughs> and, and so then Ollie ended up playing 27. 
And that's an incredible credit to um, Michael Davey, who will be on the show at some point, who is probably the best uh, basketball strength coach in the country at every level. He came Noah to Waterman us. called him Wiz earlier yeah, on the Wiz. Sports. He's the wizard. Wiz's his name. Yeah, he's been with Giannis for the last seven years uh, as the Milwaukee Bucks strength coach. And, and uh, Giannis started calling him Wiz Kid. And I actually went out there to see him um, when we were trying to recruit him to come here and work at BYU. And and uh, was in the weight room and referred to him as Michael. And, and one of the people in the weight room was like, nah, man, that's Wiz. You got to call him Wiz. If it's good enough for Giannis, I guess it's good enough for us. <laughs> and, but but um, the fact that Ali, even though he hasn't been on the court hardly at all in live play, but he was in good enough condition uh, to make it up and down the court for 27 minutes is real credit to him and the work he's put in off the court and, and, and to Wiz also.